or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Apple has just released their iOS 16 update and I'm gonna tell you the customization that you can do with this is insane and it's so much fun to just personalize everything. And I've spent all morning customizing my iPhone. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how you can customize your phone with this new update and also a few of the new features that they've added because they did quite a bit with this new update. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. So one of the major features with this update is being able to customize your lock screen in a way that we have never been able to before. So I'm gonna show you guys how I created my lock screen. This is my lock screen now. I will have these fall collages and all the pictures on the phone linked down below in my Pinterest board. But essentially, I just picked two fall collages and one is a little bit more spooky and witchy and the other one's just very cozy and autumnal. So I'll show you guys how to create a new wallpaper. So you're gonna hold it down and it's gonna minimize. To create a wallpaper, you're just gonna hit the plus sign. And they do have some wallpapers that are pre-made. They have some cool ones in there, like the space ones are pretty cool. Personally, I just wanted to create mine. So you can do a photo shuffle up here on the top. So you can pick like certain photos for your lock screen to shuffle through, or you can pick photos. So we're just gonna go to photos. And I downloaded mine from Pinterest. So so we'll just use this tree one right here. So you're gonna tap that and it's gonna bring it to where you can edit. So one app that is gonna make this even more customizable than this is Lock Widget. And I'll show you guys how to create your icons with that. First, we're gonna go ahead and customize our wallpaper. We're gonna start with the time and they've added eight different fonts for the time, which is so nice. And I think we're gonna go with this one. That one's my favorite. And you can also change the color of the time and they have some pre-selected colors at the bottom. But if you don't like any of those, you can scroll all the way to the right right and hit this rainbow circle and then use their color palette thing to pick your own shade or if you want to make it even more cohesive pick the little dropper on the left and it'll draw out colors from the picture of your wallpaper to make it even more cohesive so that's what we are gonna do and I like that a lot. So we're gonna roll with that. Up above here, it has the date and the day, and you can keep it like that if you want, or you can change it to the moon phase. You can change it to if you have an Apple Watch to have your activity. You can change it to an alarm, a birthday. There's an app called I Am, and that's just positive affirmations. So you could have positive affirmations on your lock screen, or you can do anything with the weather, like when the sun rises and when it sets and the temperature and you can do pretty much anything, but I think we're gonna do the moon phase. I think that's pretty cool. We're gonna roll with that. Down below this time is where you can add widgets to the lock screen. Apple has their own widgets that they have created. So there's some for the weather, there's some for Facebook, there's some for Snapchat, there's the affirmation app. You can have your battery even on here and just pick different formats, the clock. As you can see, lock widget keeps reappearing and that's probably my favorite. So what I did for my other wallpapers is I used the Apple weather format because I just, I like how that looks. And then I went to lock widget. It's almost the same as creating widgets with Widgetsmith for your home screen. It's just for your lock screen. I'll show you really quickly how to make an icon with lock widget. First of all, make sure you download that. <laughs> and then once you open that, you're gonna see all of these different kind of icons and widgets, I guess. So you can do different apps, you can do different weather icons. So there's like the moon phase, there's rainfall, there's temperature, what it feels like, sunrise, sunset, all that. You can make widgets for that app so it takes you directly to it from your lock screen. You can do countdowns, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. It's super cool, I love it. But to make the pumpkin one, I went to the app launcher section and hit add app. And then I went to the app list and I typed in Instagram and then it pre selected the Instagram icon for me or you can go to where it says open icon gallery and it's gonna bring up a bunch of different images that you can pick from and I found some for Halloween so I just picked a little pumpkin and hit set widget we're gonna hit set widget and we're gonna hit okay you're just gonna go back into your wallpaper and hold it down with your thumb and then hit customize once it like minimizes it and we're gonna go to our little widget section and tap that and scroll down to lock widget and then the one that we added is the smallest so we're gonna hit click to edit and we're gonna tap it once it pops up into the box here down here where it says jack that's our little jack-o-lantern so we're gonna tap that and then you can add more if you want to or you can just keep it like that so whenever you create a customized lock screen you can have a specified home screen to go with that lock screen which is so cool so whenever you hit 
done with your lock screen, it's gonna pop up a little window and you can either set as wallpaper pair or customize home screen. So we're gonna customize it so I can show you guys what all you can do. So we can keep it as the original, which is just blurring that image that you have as your lock screen. It'll just blur it as your home screen. Or you can take the blur off and it'll just be the picture itself. Or you can have it pick a color, the main color from that picture and it'll make the whole screen that color. This is kind of a bad example because it's, it's all white, but yeah, or you can do a gradient. You can also do your own photos too. So if you want it to be something totally different, you absolutely can have that too. But I think I'm going to do just the blurred image. I think I like that a lot. So we're going to do that and that's it. So the notifications come up at the bottom now. So you can just swipe it down into the bottom of the phone and it'll just tell you how many notifications that you have. So your notifications aren't overloading your home or your lock screen. And it's just a really nice way to just keep your phone looking nice and clean. So this is what my home screen looks like and I have customized quite a bit on here. So the main apps that I used, like I said, are Lock Widget, Widget Smith, and Shortcuts. The so Lock Widget is gonna allow us to make those widgets on the wallpaper like you saw on the lock screen. And Widget Smith is gonna help us create these bigger blocks of pictures on our home screen. These have been in the previous updates, but I can just show you really quickly if you don't really know how to do it. So after you download the app Widget Smith, you're gonna open that up and we'll add a small widget. And we'll just make it a picture. You can do you can do the weather, you can do the date and the time, clock, you can do the path of the sun. <laughs> so let's just pick a photo album. You can put certain photos into an album and then select that album on a widget and it'll shuffle through those photos on your home screen. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go and hit photos and album. And then we're gonna go down to selected album and we'll go to We'll do our pumpkin patch pictures. I have all of mine and Cooper's pumpkin patch pictures from the past on here, and it'll shuffle through those. That goes with our fall theme, so we'll go with that. And then you're just gonna go back and we'll rename it, um, we'll rename it pumpkin patch. Then we're gonna hit save. And you can make a small widget, there's medium widgets, or you can do the large ones and those will show like more of like a calendar if you wanna do like the date and time. To add a widget to the home screen, you're just gonna go back to your home screen and hold down with your finger and hit the plus sign at the top left. Scroll all the way down to Widget Smith. So we made a small widget, it's already selected for small, so we'll just hit add widget. And you can see this is not the one that we made. So if you do have several widgets, you'll have to go in and change that. All you're gonna do is while it's shaking like that, you're gonna tap the widget. And then you're gonna hit the blue lettering here. It'll say probably like small number something for you, but mine just says candle. So I'm gonna tap that. And you can see our pumpkin patch widget labeled here. So we're gonna tap that, tap out of it, and then there we go. And it's gonna shuffle through those pumpkin patch pictures just throughout the time my phone's unlocked or just like if I lock it and come back. And as far as the icons, so I went on Pinterest and I found just like a fall plaid pattern that I liked. I just downloaded it from there and saved it to my camera roll. And once you do that, just go into Canva. And the great thing about Canva is they already have dimensions for an iOS icon. So all you have to do is whenever you create a new project on there, just search iOS icon and tap that and it'll open up the perfect size for what you would need for your icon. So once you have your blank icon, you're just gonna hit the plus sign and then you're gonna go into your images and I have the plaid here and we're gonna hit add to page and then we're just gonna make it fit that icon size. <laughs> and this is where you just kind of want to decide what icons you want onto your home screen and what you would want to have these little shortcuts. So for instance, we'll do Instagram. So we're gonna go back to that plus sign and we're gonna go to elements and then we'll do, we'll type in Instagram. And then you're just gonna find the logo that you like. So I like this solid color one here and I don't want it black, so you can go to the bottom and change it to whatever color you want. And we're just gonna do white. And then I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger and I'm gonna center it to where it has that little, those lines that intersect there that tells me it's perfectly centered. After you get it just like you like it, you're gonna screenshot it. 
And then after you screenshot it, you're going to just crop it to just the icon. And then you're gonna hit done and then save to photos. Now, after you do that, you wanna go into your shortcuts app and this should come with your iPhone. If not, you can just go to the app store and download it. So we're gonna go into shortcuts. And then we're gonna go to the plus sign at the top right and hit add action. And then you're gonna type open app. And then where it says app in the blue, you're just gonna tap that and we chose Instagram. So we're just gonna type in Instagram, select that. And then at the very top where it has that little drop down arrow next to open app, you're just gonna tap that and hit add to home screen. And then we're gonna name it, obviously, Instagram. <laughs> and then we're gonna tap that picture on the very left, and we're gonna hit choose photo, and then it's gonna bring up all of your photos and screenshots, and you can see our screenshot that we took there of the Instagram icon that we made. So we're just gonna select that, choose, and then add. There you go, it's on your home screen, and you're just gonna hold it down and hit edit home screen and just drag it wherever you want it to go. But that's exactly what I did for all of these apps that you see on my home screen. So aside from being able to customize your lock screen so much, they did add in some more features as well that are pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few of those. They added quite a bit, but if I showed you every single one, we would be here all day. I'm just gonna show you a handful that are really, really cool. So the first one is your keyboard haptics. So now you can make it where when you're typing a text or whatever, the phone's gonna vibrate with your typing of the keyboard instead of hearing that annoying clicking sound, which you can have both, but I prefer just the quiet, like just feeling the vibration of the phone while you're typing. It just it's kind of satisfying in a weird way. So you're gonna go into your settings and scroll down to where it says sounds and haptics. And then you're gonna go to keyboard feedback. And you can either have the sound on with the haptic and then you'll see haptic and you're just gonna toggle that on and that's just gonna have that little vibrating feeling while you're typing the keyboard. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my sound off just because I just don't really care for it. <laughs> so yeah, that's a really cool feature that they added with this update. For this next feature, we're gonna go into our photos and I'm gonna show you how you can cut a subject out of those photos within seconds. So we're gonna go in and I'm gonna find a picture and it doesn't really work on live photos I found so I just turned the live part off and then I hold my finger down on her. It highlights her and we're gonna copy and then we'll say we wanna go into Instagram to post a story for instance and I'm gonna make my background solid here. And then you're gonna tap onto the story like you're gonna type in a text and then you're gonna tap your cursor and hit paste and there she is <laughs> now it's just a really fun feature to have you can even paste it like in your notes or um, you can save it as a PNG to your phone so if you just want something without the background it's a really quick way to do that next change that they added was also in the photos app if you go to your albums and you go to your hidden and you're recently deleted you do need a face ID recognition to open these folders now which you did not need before in the previous iOS updates, you've been able to recently copy text from a picture. So now you can copy text in a video. We're gonna try to copy the text off of this pillow that says trick or treat. We're just going to hold our finger down on it just like we did for taking out the subject. And you're gonna highlight it, copy, paste. Yeah. <laughs> That's super nifty, so if you're like passing a sign or if there's something you need to snag really quickly but you can only get a picture or a video, that's definitely very, very handy. Another thing that they added is if you're on a FaceTime call and your phone's dying or you just need to use your phone for something else but you don't want to end that FaceTime call, there's a button on there. I haven't done it yet. I've just heard about this feature. But there's a button that transfers that FaceTime call to either your MacBook or some other Apple device without ending the FaceTime call. Whoever had that idea gets a thumbs up for me. <laughs> So another thing they added was being able to have the battery percentage, like the number of the percentage that's left on your phone on the battery itself, instead of just showing you like the shading of the battery of where your battery is. So you're gonna go into your settings and you're gonna scroll down to battery. And then 
I have it toggled on, but it says battery percentage. Yours might be off, but you're just gonna switch it on and then it'll just pop up a number of whatever your battery is. So if you use the email icon or the email app that comes with the iPhone and you have it linked to like your Gmail or your Yahoo or whatever, you can actually schedule emails to get sent out so you don't have to like have it sent just then. And also you can unsend those emails, which is crazy to me. I've never heard of being able to unsend an email. So if you use that, definitely take advantage of that. I may switch over to that because I mean, just to have the option to be able to schedule an email or if I mess up and send it to the wrong person, to be able to unsend that just saves me so much headache. And speaking of unsending messages, with this new update, you can actually unsend text messages and edit them. Be forewarned, it will let the person know if you have unsent a message and if you have edited a text. Let's do that now actually so we're gonna message Cooper something so we'll do we'll just say hey with a heart and then it has been delivered so let's say we want to edit that so you're just gonna hold the text down and it's gonna bring up all these options and you're gonna hit edit and we'll just say we'll say hey cutie how about that and then we'll send that. So if I get embarrassed and flustered after our six years together and I don't want him to see this text, <laughs> and we're gonna hold it down and we're gonna hit undo send. Now just be known to if he was not to have seen it yet, um, it will say that I unsent a message. And then if you edit that text after they have read it, it's not gonna resend them a notification that you edited that text and it's not gonna send them that as a new text, if that makes sense. So they'll have to have not opened it yet for them to like see it actually edited. It's not gonna resend it to them after you edit that if they've opened it. Something else that you can do that is super cool that I don't know why it took them this long to be able to do this, but you can add multiple stops in Apple Maps. So for instance, I'm in real estate, so I definitely need that feature whenever I have like home tours and I'm showing multiple homes in a row. So it's really easy to just go boom, 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 just keep going and it keeps it super smooth. And I prefer Apple Maps over Google, so I was pretty happy to hear this. And another thing that you can do with your text messages is you can mark something unread. If you are one of those people, I know I've done it before, where you've opened up a text to see what it says and you can't respond that minute and you're like, oh, I'll respond in just a minute and then you never reply. You can mark it unread now so that that does not happen to your poor friends or whoever it is. You're just going to go to your text and you're just going to swipe to the right and it'll have like a blue square and you're just going to tap that and it'll bring that blue dot back to the text so it looks like you haven't even opened it yet. So one other thing that's really different with this update is the notifications on your lock screen now come from the bottom instead of like the underneath the time. So you can do different formats for these notifications. You'll see the different displays here, so you can have them as a list like they normally used to. You can have the notifications stacked, or you can have them count. So it's just gonna go to the very bottom of your phone and just say one notification, two, 10 notifications, whatever it is, and it's gonna keep your lock screen very clean. So back, I think in iOS 15, they added focus modes. So you can have your phone set to have only certain apps and only certain people could get through to you in that mode. So you could do like a fitness mode, you could do a work mode, you could do a sleep mode. It just sets your phone up to do that activity just to minimize distraction. So you can actually do that with your lock screens. So I personally don't really use focus modes. I feel like I really should, because I think they would probably help, but I just don't. If you go into your settings and you go down to focus and then we'll just do do not disturb for me because that's one that's already pretty much set up for me um, but you can pick what people are allowed to like their calls will come through only these texts will come through you can pick certain apps to only be allowed in this focus mode and then you can also customize your lock screen and your home screen to that mode just to keep you from getting distracted or to just like fit whatever you're trying to do and just make things a little bit easier so I think that that's really cool you can schedule the time for your phone to automatically switch to that mode so you don't have to do anything and I've heard that it can do that by your location too I don't know about that but this is really cool how you can do that so if you're studying for school or if you're at work it's a really great way just to keep you from getting so overwhelmed with notifications <laughs> all right you guys so well, that is it for our iOS 16 customization I really hope this video helped you out and I'm excited to see what all you guys come up with with customizing your phone I hope that this helps you to where you can set your phone up just the way that you like it and if you did enjoy the video and it helped you out please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below because it does support my channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video bye